This is the morning weather briefing. This is for Wednesday, the 7th of February. This is James Spann. If you like the weather yesterday, I think you'll like the weather today. A big warm up today. We'll see 60s, maybe some low 70s in South Alabama, but the weather turns awfully wet by the time the weekend gets here. And the rain could linger into Monday of next week. And when does Arctic air come back? That's all the buzz about that. And we'll take a look at all the new data as we go here. This is where we stand this morning. This is the upper air look across the country. Got the uh, trough well off the Atlantic coast. That's what brought the rain this past Sunday. And we have a ridge in place across the eastern half of the country. And that means sinking air, dry air, and no rain. Really nice weather today. But the trough in the western states, that'll be progressive. And that brings a chance of showers initially late Friday. But again, a lot of rain for Saturday, Sunday, and a part of the day Monday of next week. Here's the radar composite across the country this morning. Got some uh, scattered rain showers and snow showers out west. And again, all of that will be progressing eastward. Some of the colder pockets are below freezing this morning. For example, Gadsden's got 29, Haleyville 30, 32 for Cullman and Pell City. Most of north and central Alabama in the mid to upper 30s, Birmingham at 37, Huntsville 37, low 40s to the south. But again today, dry air heats very efficiently. We're expecting highs in the 60s today. And again, south Alabama could see low 70s, places like Mobile, Enterprise, Geneva, Atmore, and Dothan. So here's the watch warning map in the counties in pink out west. Those are winter storm warnings for the mountains there. Uh, the darker blue, those are winter weather advisories. And the shades of brown, those are wind advisories. But again, the east is fairly quiet. No severe storms expected for the rest of this week. There could be some thunderstorms today for parts of the southwest and the Great Plains. Tomorrow, of all places, a chance of thunder over parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, upper Michigan. You don't hear a lot of thunder up there this time of the year that often. Also, maybe some thunder for parts of Arizona. And then on Friday, which is day three, a chance of some thunder from East Texas up into Kentucky that can eclipse northwest Alabama. That's with activity along a surface front. Uh, but again, severe storms are not expected. Here's a look at rain for the next seven days, valid through Wednesday morning of next week in the wettest spot in the United States, right here. Uh, rain amounts for the northern two-thirds of Alabama between two and three inches. And this is basically going to knock out the rest of the drought. Uh, rain amounts for South Alabama near one inch. Let's take it day by day. Model fans, this is the GFS. This is the 06Z run. Valid today at four. Ridge here, trough in the west, and again, just gorgeous. A sunny day today with highs in the 60s for most of the state, maybe low 70s for South Alabama. This is tomorrow. Again, a nice day. We're dry with highs in the 60s. Friday, the, the GFS a little slower with that front, suggesting a decent chunk of the day Friday could be dry. And again, very mild highs in the upper 60s and low 70s statewide. Uh, the band of showers pushing in here Friday night. And then the front just stops. It stalls out. And we have a southwest flow aloft. Little waves move along the stall front. And that's going to set up a really wet weekend. This is Saturday, very mild. The highs, again, upper 60s and low 70s. Most likely the heaviest rain over the northern half of the state. And then Sunday, it could be the heaviest rain shifting to the southern half of the state. But clearly, we'll have waves of rain on both days. We note that surface low developing near Lake Charles. And this is Monday at noon. Uh, the GFS depicting a 998 millibar surface low near uh, Nashville. And if we were to have some instability, that could bring some strong storms, but we really don't have much instability. Of course, we'll watch trends to see if this you know, changes in coming days, but at the moment, it looks like Monday will be wet with rain and storms, especially during the morning. Maybe a strong storm, but the severe weather potential at this point looks low simply because of the lack of instability. So this is... Tuesday, all of that's on by. And we know that this happens to verify that could be a whopper of a snowstorm for New England. But again, Tuesday here would be cool and dry. Highs in the 50s, lows in the 30s, seasonal, right at average levels. This is a week from today, Wednesday the 14th. It's Valentine's Day. Got a zonal flow and again, cool and dry with 50s and 30s. 
Let's go out 10 days. This is Friday of next week, the 16th. The flow beginning to bend back to the southwest, but again, we're still in a fairly dry air mass. This is suggesting some rain could creep into the southwestern counties of the state, but there's certainly evidence here in the longer range that we could be looking at another wet weekend. That would be the weekend of the 17th and the 18th of February. I don't know what it is about wet weekends. By the way, here's a look at temperature anomalies, you know, and all the buzz about Arctic air, that there is no brutally cold Arctic air next week. This is, and this is out 10 days. This is Friday the 16th. And if this works out, temperatures here would be a little above average and well above average from uh, the Texas Panhandle to the Great Lakes. We do note some colder air over Canada and New England. And again, I fully expect a couple of really good cold air pops here before we get into spring. We all know that. This is early February, but again, no evidence of that for the next 10 days. Rain for Birmingham off the European Ensemble. The mean a little over three inches between now and the 22nd of the month. And speaking of numbers, here's a look at the National Blend of model, Models output, the NBM, for the next 10 days. And again, this is for Birmingham. Of course, your number could be different, but uh, 60s through Monday. And again, look at 68 in here on Friday and Saturday, which means if you're from Montgomery South, you could easily see low 70s. And then next week's very seasonal. Highs in the 50s and lows in the 30s. Again, I've seen some of the, uh, these, you know, jabronis with their Facebook page saying, it's, we're going to have brutal cold next week. Well, that's not brutal cold. That's average. And speaking of that, let's look at the longer range. Uh, this is for the 14th through the 20th, and this is coming from NOAA's CPC, the Climate Prediction Center. This is not model output. This is a vetted product. And we're in the blue. Temperatures below average, and I think that's the right idea. But we don't know how cold. And understand below average could be a high of 50 and a low of 30 here. That's below average. We just don't know that yet, but the pattern looks colder in about 10 to 15 days. We'll see how it plays out. But, again, nobody knows how cold or if there's any winter mischief. We'll just have to watch trends. So I wanted to mention uh, the Weather Service in Birmingham. This is their Severe Weather Awareness Week. Uh, they do this once a year to try and get people thinking about severe weather preparedness and what to do and how to be ready. Alabama's tornado season here is November through May. All right, we're in the middle of it. But the peak tends to be in March and April. And this is why they typically do this week in February. And, of course, just a few points. And I, I'm not going to get on my soapbox and preach here, but never, ever, ever, ever. Rely on an outdoor siren. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, you got to have a weather radio. NOAA weather radio in your house. That's the uh, baseline. Find your house on a map. And again, you, look, if you're watching these videos, you're a dweeb. Uh, you, you got this. But you can help us by kind of spreading the word to your friends. And But uh, it, it is stunning how many people cannot do this. Uh, we've been to some events where we hand out blank maps with county lines and state lines. We ask people to put a dot within 50 miles of their house, and they cannot do it. And uh, maps to them, it's just like Russian. And we have to use maps when the weather is dangerous. Of course, know where you're going in your house. Identify the safe place. Small room, lowest floor, near the center, no windows. In that safe place, helmets for everybody. And if you live in a trailer, a mobile home, where are you going to go? You can't stay there. How do you get there? How do you get there quickly? Do you have transportation? And again, one of the big things I think that's a good emphasis is the fact that you can be a hero here. You can help us by passing on critical weather information. A lot of people are busy. Listen, and we're not faulting anybody. Folks are busy, and they don't have time to pay attention to weather, and they might not know we have a high-impact weather event coming. So you can help us by spreading the word. And again, if you watch these videos, you're in the loop. So real quick, one sunset photograph last night that was up on the Tennessee River near Athens. Lisa Fielder took that, and that was just an absolutely gorgeous scene. Going to Hoover, Simmons Middle School today. After that, Children's of Alabama for a program for their patients and families. And then uh, Alabama Virtual Academy, I'll be speaking to their students after that. So a three-for-one special today. Tomorrow, it is Bryant Park Elementary School, one of the newer schools in Jefferson County out in the Clay Chalkville area. Friday, Eva Elementary School. And then on Saturday, it's the Rocket City Weather Fest. Yeah, buddy. 
Uh, we got a book signing from 11 to 1. 11 to 1. Before the book signing, I will be speaking if you're interested. In fact, here's the schedule. I'm just one of the many speakers and items on the docket there. I'll be up at 1015, uh, leading it off. And uh, I'm going to do a case study on March 25th, 2021, a tornado event here. We had multiple long track tornadoes and we had loss of life. We'll look at the setup, the watch warning process, what worked, what didn't work, and what we learned. And I like to do those case studies. So again, that's a 1015. But the book event where we take all the pictures and have the hats and the shirts and all the cool stuff, the books, that's between 11 and 1. And again, we'll post the uh, specific locations on the UAH campus uh, on the social platforms. But this will be held at UAH, and it's free. It doesn't cost a dime. We hope you can come. And, of course, as always, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.